Thank you, Chair. Dear Chair, honorable members, dear colleagues. I'm delighted to be here, both as a colleague and as Vice President Designate for Democracy and Demography. The European Parliament feels like home for me. Six years ago, I was elected as member of the European Parliament in the first Croatian delegation following our accession in 2013 and was honored to be re-elected in both 2014 and 2019. So this is my third consecutive term, but this time I'm on this side uh, of, of the house. So it is a privilege to be here today, and it is even more of an honor to seek your confidence for a portfolio which touches so many of the issues that we have discussed and worked on together in the last six years. In that time, many of the debates we have had in this House focused on the following questions. How to give people a greater say in their future and ensure they can shape their union? Then how to build trust and confidence with those who feel disconnected and disaffected? And how to support those who are most affected by many different changes and transitions our union is undergoing? So these three questions are key for our citizens. As someone who has worked as a municipal representative, as a local councillor, as a mayor of my hometown Dubrovnik, and as a member of Croatian and European Parliament, I have seen and heard some of the frustrations that lie behind these questions. Ultimately, it comes down to a feeling of a loss of control, a change that people feel they have no way of stopping, shaping or affecting a sense that their communities, careers and lifestyles are all being transformed at a rate quicker than they can follow. This leads to a loss of trust in people and institutions who are there to serve and support them. The truth is that we need, no be the, the truth is that we need to better understand and address the underlying reasons behind this. And for me, this is as much about addressing a democratic deficit as it is about addressing a demographic deficit. Over the next few years, we will talk a lot about the climate and digital transitions, but I also believe that we need to talk more and more about once Europe's deepest lying transformations, which is demographic change. This is an issue which is changing the face of many parts of Europe and affecting millions of Europeans, bringing along challenges, but also many opportunities. Demographic change is defining the landscape of our politics, our democracy, and our communities. Those who feel left behind by progress and transition are the ones most likely to become dissatisfied. We need to give Europeans a greater voice a chance to regain the ability to shape the community, the society, the union they live in. This is why I'm such a strong supporter of the idea of the Conference on the Future of Europe. This idea was put forward by the President-elect, and it is why I'm delighted to be entrusted with leading the Commission's work on it. This conference should bring together citizens of all ages from across our union with a significant role for young people, as well as civil society and European institutions as equal partners. We need a wide debate, clear objectives, and tangible follow-up on what is agreed. This is an idea that has long been discussed in this House, especially in this committee, and I believe there is now the will and the momentum for us all to work together to make this a success. Nothing shows this better than the record high number of votes in the last European elections, in which more than half of European citizens had their say. This shows there is a clear appetite from Europeans for wanting to shape the future of the Union. European democracy is far more than voting only one in five years. The, confidence is about making, the conference is about making European democracy a living concept beyond the European elections. It is about us all listening to one another and agreeing on what we should focus on and how ambitious we should be. Dear colleagues, there is no time to waste. 
The president-elect has set an ambitious timetable by announcing that the conference will start in 2020 and it will run for two years. This is why, if confirmed by you, I will work with this House, with the Council and all, other involved, all others involved to agree on the concept, structure, format, timing and scope of the conference. I will put forward my ideas very early in my mandate and I want to stress the importance of working together with you members from across this house, representing people from across this union to make this success. We want to make this conference a success. We will no doubt dive into details in the next hours, but let me share with you three principles that must underpin our approach. First, first idea or first principle, we need to reach out to all Europeans. If confirmed, my aim would be to make sure that Europeans have a real say on how their union is run and what it delivers on. We need to engage with Europeans across our union to listen to their hopes, expectations and their concerns, which are related to their realities. Those linked to climate, economy, digital development, global transformation, demographic changes. President-elect has tasked me with finding ways to make participation in person or online and make it as easy and accessible as possible. I will make this as absolute priority. This is first idea. My second idea is that we must work together. The Conference on the Future of Europe cannot be run by one person, by one party, by one institution, or even by a part of Europe. It must be a team effort. Nowhere is this truer than in the Commission itself. I will work closely with the Vice President for Institutional Relations and Foresight and with the Vice President for Values and Transparency, as well as with all other colleagues to make this a success. This will be particularly important in the first phase, where common ground will be needed when it comes to finding a way for the Spitzenkandidaten system and discussing the idea of transnational lists. This, was, this will be in the first part of our mandate. Within the Commission, this work will be led by this Vice President Jourova, but we will, of course, work ha hand in hand on all matters related to the conference. Strengthening Europe's democracy cannot be done without the strong and active participation of the Europeans' own directed... The, um, with, with <laughs> Strengthening democracy cannot be done without, uh, without the most important body, which is, uh, which is the European Parliament and the body which uh, has active participation of our citizens. I am fully committed to work with you and the Council in all stages of the conference. And my third idea is this conference must lead to results. Listening to citizens is essential, but is not an end in itself. Real understanding means to taking real action. We need to make sure that whatever is agreed is enacted. This is always the problem in, 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 in Europe, so we, what we agreed we have to enact, we have to implement. This was an explicit commitment of the president-elect in her political guidelines, and I will work with all my colleagues within the Commission, as well as with this House, and with all committees, uh, there are five committees here, but with all committees who are interested, and all other institutions to make sure we follow up on what is agreed. Dear members, a meaningful and successful conference on the future of Europe is an important tool in building trust and participation in our democracy. But as, but as I said earlier, the key to strengthening our democracy also lies in showing and understanding what is the reason behind it? I believe one of the least tackled issues is demographic change. I have seen this firsthand in the, members, in the member state, state I know best, with the prolonged period of declining population having a real impact across the country. For some parts of Europe, it is true that this is an issue that feels somehow distant or abstract. But for others, including in large parts of Central and Eastern, Eastern Europe, but also in rural areas across all the Union, this is a very real and tangible concern. It is real and tangible for older people who rely on local services 
seeing post offices, libraries, hospitals close, or seeing local buses become less frequent. This is the situation in rural areas. It is a real and tangible concern for parents who see their children have to move away to find opportunities to work or study. And it is a real and tangible concern for those bringing up children in poverty or trying to balance work and life responsibilities. Of course, it is overwhelmingly good news that we are living longer and healthier lives. But this also comes its, with its own set of challenges, be it related to the economy, our pensions, healthcare, the social fabric to, of our societies. We need, to understand this, we need to understand this much better than we do. This is why I will undertake an extensive mapping exercise to look at where the problems lie and how best to support those regions most in need, how to help them to implement reforms and, attract, and how to attract investments. If confirmed by the European Parliament, by you, I will look at every aspect of demographic change and how it impacts the different groups affected. Allow me to give you a few concrete examples of what I believe we must work on together. First, I want to look at the issue of aging one of our biggest society challenges. This affects our working lives, our social protection systems, our health system, and our pensions. It also brings many new opportunities. We need to ensure that we are passing knowledge down through generations and helping pe people become more active and more involved in society. I will put forward a green paper on aging to assess what can and needs to be done notably to foster active aging and look at whether our so social protection systems are fit for an older population. This will be done in close cooperation with this house and of course with member <coughs> states who have the competencies in most of these areas. Second, I want to focus on rural areas which are often the most deeply affected by declining population, lack of opportunities leading to brain drain a severe shortage in frontline services and higher risk of poverty. I will also coordinate the work on a long-term vision for rural areas in close consultation with local and regional authorities. We need to enable them to make the most of their potential and support them in facing up to their own unique set of issues. I will focus on the issue of brain drain, supporting the regions most affected, notably through the youth guarantee. Thirdly, and as a part of the implementation of the European pillar of social rights, I will coordinate the work on better reconciling work and family life. And last, but certainly by no means least, and uh, this is how I reply to your question, Honorable Chair. Later on, I can elaborate more. Uh, you asked me about children. I will lead the work on investing in our children. This has been a priority for me throughout my career in politics. There is no more important investment than we can make than in our children. We call it investment. I will coordinate the work on a new child guarantee and present a comprehensive strategy for the rights of the child. Honorable members, we will have time to discuss all of this in great detail and I welcome all of your questions. Allow me to finish on a personal note. As someone who witnessed a country gain its independence, its democratic strength, and the transition towards our union, it is with great responsibility and humility that I accept the task I have been given. The very fact that we can have a conference on the future of Europe, or that we can find European solutions to changes that affect us all, is because of the sacrifice of those before us who were building our union. If confirmed, I will be determined and honored to be able to honor that legacy with you all over the next five years. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to your questions. Grazie signora vicepresidente, grazie anche per 
aver ribadito l'impegno che a noi sta particolarmente a cuore per la conferenza sul futuro dell'Europa e per aver ribadito il ruolo importante che dovrà avere questo Parlamento, che non potrà essere il ruolo di un fiancheggiatore, ma 